In this video, I turn an old bedside table and some scrap wood into this. Hello beautiful people! This has been the most satisfying and exciting project I've done so far. I'm absolutely in love with the end result and I hope you enjoy it as much. If you do like content like this, please hit the subscribe button, it helps me a lot. Thank you! The whole idea of my channel is to use and upcycle all things and basically to minimize waste. And for this project I use a bunch of scrap wood that I had left over from building the bench that you just saw me using. I've always been fascinated by people who can carve or paint or make beautiful things and I never thought I could do it. Never thought of myself as an artistic person but I wanted to give it a try and see if I can make something pretty. In order to create this natural organic shape I glued a lot of wood all around the bedside table to give myself a thick surface to work with and to create dramatic shapes. As with most of my projects, I didn't really have a plan other than a picture in my head of what I wanted to create and I basically tried many different tools and many different methods to see what worked best. Some of the tools I used in this video I wish I had at the beginning of this project but I did include some footage just so you guys know what they are and how they work. And just to tease you a little bit, I did buy a tool recently that's not in this video that I'll be using on my next project and it's super cool. It would be much easier to do this glue up if I flip this piece on its back but I wanted to have really tight reveals between the drawers and I didn't want to risk them moving up or down. Because I was using whatever scraps of wood I had in my workshop, I had to glue lots of them together just to basically cover the entire bedside table. I'm always curious what you guys are actually interested in watching and some bits that I find quite boring I think you guys like, so please do leave comments below and let me know what you find interesting and if there is anything you want me to put more of or maybe less. For the longest time I couldn't decide what to do about the top of this bedside table but I decided to take it off. I played with an idea of using different species of wood on the top and maybe having a life edge as well, but in the end I thought that having a cohesive look was the most important and that's what I went with. You're probably thinking right now, does he even have a clue what he's doing? I do realize this is looking pretty outrageous right now, but guys just trust the process. Once I glued all the pieces on, I took a pencil and I roughly drew the shape that I wanted to carve. I really wanted to create an organic looking piece of furniture and I didn't want those shapes to look like an obvious pattern. So I made them look quite random as something that you would find in nature. Have I mentioned that this is my first time doing anything like this? I've never carved anything in my life and this is a completely new experience so I'm basically learning on the job.
Are you guys ready for this? Because I'm not sure I was at that point. Though I must say that I found this whole carving process quite intuitive. Using an angle grinder with a carving wheel that I was using could potentially be very dangerous, so if you ever do this you need to make sure you hold on to the angle grinder really well. This was actually a really fun process and I learned a lot, but it was really really dusty. As you can probably imagine, what you see in 20 minutes took many many days and I'm not gonna make you sit through all of it, but just to give you an idea what it actually took and what the process looked like, here are some clips. Because of the incredibly irregular shape that I was working with, I would go back and forth between many different tools to see whatever worked, but in the end I realized that using a nylon brush that you can see me using right here was the way to go. As I was using the nylon brush I realized that if you go with the grain, the brush will remove the softer portion of the grain which is the lighter color much quicker than the darker one which is the harder one and it will create a really interesting layer look. You will see some close-ups of what it looks like later on in the video. My original idea for the legs was basically to glue some wood to the bottom of the bedside table and to carve them in a way so they would look like a continuous piece. But I found these on Amazon and I think I was able to incorporate them into this design in a way that they look really nice. Don't laugh at me, but I didn't have the right size Allen key, so I improvised. This is one of the tools that I purchased as I was working on this project towards the end of it. And to be honest, I didn't really like it, even though it looks like something that would be very useful. It was very difficult to work with and I don't recommend it. Now that I'm done with this project and I've tested all sorts of tools, I can tell you that if you want to try this at home, all you really need is an angle grinder with a carving bit and a drill with a nylon brush. And if you shop online or if you buy used tools, you can get all of it for under 100 pounds. I mean, you probably need a handsaw or something to cut the wood with, but I'm assuming you've got some basic tools at home. As I already mentioned, in order to achieve this organic and natural look, I used the same wood for the top. As I was not going to carve much from the top, I chose the best side of each piece to kind of make it look nice together.
I used the existing holes for the screws to attach the top and I used the jigsaw to kind of give it the rough shape that I wanted. I wanted the top to be an integral part of this whole design, so I extended the shapes on the sides and the front of the bedside table into the top. Just as I did on the rest of the bedside table, I used a nylon brush to create that nice layered look on the top and then I used some wood glue and I sanded it just to make sure that all those tiny gaps remaining from the glue up were not visible. I clean up all the edges by hand and I sanded the drawers inside and out and also made sure that all the parts that you can't really see were nice and tidy. I made sure that transitions between the drawers were not very obvious. After many hours of sanding and nylon brushing, this is the layered look I told you about. And when I was almost finished with my project, I got this really cool detail belt sander from Evolution. I wish I had this at the beginning of my project, but I just wanted you guys to see how it works and that you can actually use this for this sort of jobs. So when it comes to the top of this bedside table, I wanted it to have the same look as the rest of it, but I didn't want to do much carving just because this would be a useful surface. So I just used my nylon brush to achieve this layered look, but at the same time keep it flat. If you like this type of videos and you haven't subscribed, please do so because I have a really exciting carving project coming up soon and this way you will receive notifications when I post a new video. As you know by now, I always take care of the back of my pieces, the inside and the bottom as well. And I did exactly the same on the back, use my nylon brush and a sander to achieve the same cohesive look. And after many, many days of hard work, it's time for the finishing touches. So I dusted off the bedside table and I got it ready for pre-stain. I use the pre-stain, especially on soft woods like pine, to make sure that the dye is absorbed evenly and there is no patches. The pre-stain from Aminwax that I was using is super easy and quick to apply and you only wait 10-15 minutes before you can apply your dye or stain. For some reason I couldn't decide on the color for this project but I went with golden oak and this is water-based wood dye and it's super easy to apply with a paint sprayer. This particular one I dilute with quite a lot of water 
I've used it before and the color is quite dark so for me it's just easier to use multiple coats until I'm happy with the shade rather than do one and then realize that it's too dark. It was a very hot day and because this is a water-based wood dye it literally took 10-15 minutes between coats because it dried so quickly. I don't honestly know how many coats I've done but multiple and in some parts I did more than in others just to basically create shades and the look that I was going for. And this is what it looked like when the dye was dry. And to seal my project I used a satin clear coat from Plastic Coat which I had never used before but I was very happy with the result. I did four coats and I started lightly and progressively made them more wet until I was happy with the finish. And this wouldn't be Flipping Drawers video if I didn't use my favorite orange scented beeswax inside of this piece. I basically applied it to the sides, bottom and inside of the drawers just to make it look nice and give it a beautiful orange scent. And for the first time ever, I did not use hardware on this bedside table. Instead, I used a mechanism that allows you to press on the drawer and it will just open it from the inside. And this way I can keep this very organic, natural look and don't use hardware to distract from it. Before you see the photos from the session I had in the woods, which was super cool and very unusual, uh, thank you so much for making it this far into the video and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and see you soon.